Yeah, no, no. Just talk about this spring and how difficult it's going to be to be just kind of a limited participant and what kind of leadership role have you taken, you know, with some of the young guys and new guys you have? Yeah, um, I mean, it's tough. Um, I haven't been out for this long since I started playing football. So uh, just for me to sell out and not be able to do stuff, I mean, I just started doing indie not so long ago, so I'm able to get back into it a little bit. But um, I guess it's a blessing in disguise. It's teaching me how to how to lead from a different point of perspective and how to be there for younger guys and also the older guys, you know. Um, you know, we got a very mix between old guys and young guys in the DB room, so it's kind of just teaching me how to get to everybody, um, how to connect with certain people. Yeah, what, what would you say are the biggest things you've learned about yourself, about the defense, just from watching the spring from another perspective, mm -hmm. being on the sidelines more than you've been in the past? Um, I say, Probably just knowing the defense, uh, you know, like when you just get, when you got to sit there and watch, um, it teaches you to watch different things. Uh, usually you just kind of pay attention to what I got to do to do beside me and do it in front of me, but like you see everything when you're just sitting there watching and trying to coach everybody up. So um, that's probably the biggest thing. And for myself, uh, probably just being more vocal. I mean, not being able to be out there has forced me to speak up a little more, um, you know, and just be that, that voice that, uh, that we need. Okay, what stood out to you from the competition at safety this spring, just all those different guys and, and how they've been competing at this point in spring? Right. Um, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of depth in that room. Uh, and, you know, that room is very competitive. Uh, you know, and just, just to watch everybody go out every day and try to just compete. You know, beat the guy in front of them, but still in a healthy way. Uh, healthy competition is what we talk about a lot in that room, and um, I see it, you know, from every guy, older to youngest guy in there to the older guy, oldest guy in there, they're all going out there and competing and trying to get better every day. So, I mean, it's a good thing to see. I thought what about um, KJ Bullen. He kind of comes in with a, a, a lot of hype, another Georgia guy from sort of your area. Right. Um, have you tried to take him under your wing, or is it? I know you tried to take all the young guys mm -hmm. under your wing, but I just wonder if you see a little connection there or some similarities between him and KJ. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know he, he's very athletic, very smart. Uh, you know, just like all the young guys that came in with him, they all they all have uh, talents that they that they possess. But uh, you know he he's very. Uh, He's like a sponge, you know. He just wants to soak up all the knowledge and all the information. Um, you know, you, you see him in meetings, he's just writing stuff down, uh, you know. And I think um, the the thing that shocked me the most, I think all the freshmen have that. You know, like I watch him in meetings, and they're all taking notes, they're all writing stuff down. So I think um, I think that that class um, is going to be very good. Is it is it fair to say he reminds you of yourself a little bit? Um, a little bit. I, I'd say that just a little bit. Yes, sir. Okay. How long was the shoulder injury kind of lingering? Um, that you need to get worked on, and when you talk about doing India practice, like how many minutes are you actually doing something? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd say it's tough because I, I had tweaked it during fall camp, um, and then I want to say third or fourth game into the season, I kind of felt it and it just wasn't how it's supposed to be. Um, and then I figured out before the Bama game that I had to get surgery. Um, and I decided to wait until after FSU. Um, I got that done, and I've been, I mean, probably most of, I'm doing all the indie, I just can't have any contact, so I'm doing drills and everything that doesn't involve hitting, I'm doing, so. Why was it important for you to play in that Florida State game, knowing that you had to have the surgery, mm -hmm. and knowing that it might cost you some time this spring? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think there's a few things that played into it. One, the guys that I played with last year, I won't get to play with them again this year, um, or ever, probably, uh, unless we get on the same team when we get to a higher level. And you know, that connection that we built, that bond that we had on that team was, was special. And two, the job wasn't finished, you know. Uh, a lot of people um, had opted out, which there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, there was still a game to play. And just because it wasn't the game we wanted to play or whatever the case may be, I just wasn't going to just sit out and treat it like it wasn't nothing. We got to speak to Shakori Thomas last week, and he got to know him a little bit. Just what kind of guy is he behind the scenes? And what have you seen out of him? Yeah, uh, Jacory's like my best friend, man. He uh, he's a character for sure. Um, but he, I mean, you can tell he loves the game of football. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. And you know, just to see his growth that he's taken from, uh, I mean, even from like the last practice to this spring when we practiced at FSU, he had a really good practice and that transition into the spring. So he's getting better day by day. So um, it's really good to see his growth.
Just what about his, just behind the scenes? You guys are best friends? Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he's a fool, man. He, uh, he, lo he loves to laugh a lot. Um, he's a foodie, I guess you would call it a foodie. I don't know the name for it, I guess that would be it. But uh, he, he loves it, man, and um, he's just always trying to make somebody smile. Yeah, y'all had Jake Pope, uh, the transfer mm -hmm. guy. Y'all came out of high school in the same place. Right. What's your relationship with him like dating back to high school? Mm -hmm. that one? And what's it like now seeing him in the meeting room on the practice field on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. um, so I knew Jake a little bit in high school. I didn't know him. Like, we weren't best friends or anything, but I know him in high school. Um, and, you know, just for to see him come in from Bama and just the knowledge that he has from Bama coming into here, um, we kind of pick back forth off each other. Like, hey, what'd y'all do there? Like, how is it there? Whatever the case is, just trying to pick his brain and <coughs> see the differences. Um, but, uh, you know, our relationship is good, you know. Um, he's, he's one of the older guys in the room, so he, he has that voice also. So just to see him come in and just to see him grow, I'm seeing him grow as well, so it's a good thing to see. Okay, I kind of, kind of <clears throat> this is kind of old news, but I kind of want to get your perspective. I was just thinking about this the other day. I mean, you guys had a great season last year, mm -hmm. but there were six straight games that other teams scored on the opening mm -hmm. drive, and you were on the you're on the back end of that. Right. So you you had <laughs> you had the uh, view in your lap. Um, what do you learn? Do, do, does, that, does this year's team look back on that? Like you know, I guess Lucene always would say we're not as good as you guys think. I mean, how much of a sense of urgency comes from last year's issues? And, and how did you navigate that? I mean, Kirby mm -hmm. ended up just, he told a joke about it and then it stopped the next game. Right. How did you, you guys navigate that? Um, I think the biggest thing is we take pride in defense here. Uh, and that, that's the biggest thing. And, you know, we always didn't play how we wanted to. Um, we always finished how we wanted to. We never played how we wanted to. Um, you're never going to play a perfect game. And I think the thing that we just did was just try to hone in on the things that were important, you know. Um, you know, when we play defense, it takes first level, second level, and third level. So, um, you know, if they if they score, you just can't say, oh, it was a linebacker, it was a D-line, the safety missed a fit. It, if they score, it's for something wrong at all three levels. So um, we just all try to be on the same page. And taking that from last year to this year, you know, just making sure everybody is on the same page. We all have the sense of urgency, um, knowing what's important. Not having been able to have been out there as much as you probably would have liked, just mm -hmm. what defines a successful spring to you? Um, probably, probably how much I can learn. Uh, and affect others. I think that's the biggest thing for me in my role right now is being able to affect other people, um, whether if it's young guy, old guy, GA, coach, it doesn't matter. Um, just bringing that energy, knowing that every day I came out there and I was the same guy no matter what. Um, yeah, I can't practice, but I'm not gonna sit around and just pout about it. Like I'm, I want everybody to get better. I want to see, I want to see the defense grow. So just being able to um, just learn and teach, really. You kind of talked about um that Alabama look, and obviously you've got a coach from Alabama, right. Andreas Robinson. Um, what has the experience like been being able to, to work with him and, and talk with him, especially not being on mm -hmm. the field, and just what's it been like to pick his brain a little right. bit? Um, I mean, it's been awesome, you know. He uh, <laughs> he actually got here, and uh, our first meeting, he like, like if you closed your eyes, you would think Muschamp was talking. Um, <laughs> so I was like, when it told me, I was like, did Mustang give you a script? Like, or what the same when you got here? Like, y'all saying the same things. I mean, I forgot they've been together for a long time. But, uh, you know, he's very knowledgeable about the game. And just to see him come in from another perspective, you know, again, from Bama, uh, seeing what they did and things that they've done. And, you know, um, he just brings a different perspective and a different type of energy to the room. Um, you know, I haven't been able to be out there, but uh, I meet with him a lot. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he runs in the morning and every day at 5. And he told me, and I texted him Monday, and I was like, I texted him at 4:30. I was like, I was like, yo, you up? He had texted me back. I was, I was already here, cause I was trying to beat him here. Uh, <laughs> he had texted me back, so I started running. He calls me at five o'clock. He's like, where are you up? I'm like, I'm in indoor. He's like, come outside. So we start running. We run two miles or whatever. Um, and after that, we went up and watched film. So just that that connection, I'm starting to build with him. Uh, you know, it's it's very special. I'm excited to see where it goes. Malika, when you look to Saturday and G Day, more so as a defensive back, mm -hmm. what is a successful G Day for the secondary? You know, coming out of that game and saying, "Okay, we accomplished this." Right. Um, I I'd say just going out there and compete. You know, everybody being on the same page. Uh, just seeing guys wanting to know know what the job is and how to get it done, and just going out there and compete. Because you know, like we, I like to say we play the hardest position on the field. You know, we're going to give up the ball time to time, but it's about it's always about the next play. So, uh, I mean, it's going to happen, but I want to see guys when it does happen, how do they respond? So, um, I think that that'll say a lot about the room that we have.
you're a guy who's earned a lot of their NIL opportunities. How have you balanced sort of managing that portfolio of things that you have there while also still obviously prioritizing your development as a player at Georgia? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, I think honestly, the the best answer I can give you is probably I, I keep the main thing the main thing. You know, NIL is great. I love it. Um, but you know, my whole goal before before I got college, cause it wasn't the thing when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, and my whole goal was to come here and get developed and go to the league, and I keep that the main thing. Uh, and I mean, I got I got a great team with me. I'm with ESM. They do a great job. Uh, they take a lot of load off of me. Um, but you know, I just try to stay focused on the main thing. Time for one more. You, you talked about KJ earlier. There's obviously a lot of talented young guys on the defensive side of the ball. Just what does it take to play as a freshman in this defense? Mm -hmm. um, I think. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know the defense. Um, you don't have to know it perfect. Uh, you don't gotta be a master of the defense, but you have to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And you also have to have effort. Um, people gotta be able to count on you. Like if I can, if I can look over there and know what you're gonna do, and I can count on you to do your job, then you can play. And that goes not just for freshmen, but anybody in the room. If you can be accountable and you have effort, then you'll play on the defense. That's all. All right, Malachi. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Malachi.